Today on the Hangout, the Raptors are rolling, and they kept it going against the Phoenix Suns. We talking best backcourt in the NBA, and I got Paul and Harden. Boogie down, the Warriors keeping their composure on a head up. Basketball fans, welcome into the belly of the beast that is the Air Canada Center. I'm Akil Augustine, and this is Canada's home for talking hoops, the Hangout. I host the show. Dan ruins the show, and two other guests join us. That's Dan Gladman on the end oh. of the couch. How you doing, buddy? Is that how it's going to be today? That's how it's going to be today. Okay. I'm set, I'm set it up for right. Already, I don't think you're going to get a word in edgewise with These this These are the crew. Infinity Wars of basketball, buddy. I hope you're prepared. All I'm right? ready to go. Let's okay, Dan Gladman, producer of the Toronto Raptors broadcast. You know and love this guy from the couch. You used to know and love him from the radio. Diva, what are you doing now? And why, why is it every time I turn on my TV, I see your face? <laughs> you check me out, Rogers Channel 1, Your World This Week, and Entertainment City on City TV, man. All over the country. I love well, it. Hey, first off, congratulations thank on the you, move. Man, we're proud that. of you and we're thank happy you. for you. Thank you. Don't thank shake you, his hand, you. man. I didn't introduce <laughs> you yet. Uh, They're on TV too much. Randy <laughs> Urban, um, what do you do? I don't know, a few things here and there. All right, you have a dentist appointment later today. today. Yeah, yeah, if I could get this show. He's been stressed out about this dentist appointment. He's got cavities. <laughs> <laughs> Just two. Just two. All right, uh, enough with the fun stuff. Let's jump into the facts. Raptors win 126 113 against the Phoenix Suns squad. Everyone's worried about um, Devin Booker's health. Hopefully, more information comes out about that. Was that was crazy. But let's talk about Serge Ibaka. Great game for him. 19 points, 6 rebounds, 3 huge blocks. This is a guy that's getting $20 million a year, and some people are, are upset that he's turned into kind of a one-dimensional player. Dan, you're there, you're watching the game on a night-to-night -night basis. Your impression of how Serge has kind of grown into a role with this group this season. Well, this will be my weekly question to you of who are these people who are upset. The people, man! <laughs> the, we deal the, with the, the people. The first thing I'm going to say is the Raptors are doing great. They're 15-7. and seven. Lay off and enjoy it. This team's great. Now, Ibaka did get off to a, a relatively slow start. Oh, so after that, he finally admits Ibaka had a slow start. Yeah, Jeez, so thanks, did Lowry. Man. There's no reason to get upset at anything or anyone. But in the last two games, and I noticed it in the game against Indiana, it was a different Serge Ibaka. It might, it, you know, it was suggested on the broadcast last night there have been some days off. There's been some home cooking. Rest. Possibly that rest, which the team is taking very seriously, is helping. And we've had two brilliant games from Ibaka in a, a supporting role to Kyle and DeMar, but he's been terrific in these last two games. No reason to be upset or worry. I Time to talk to the quote-unquote people. How have you two felt about I Serge's think presence? Where I cut. saw it change a little bit was actually in New York. You know, when, when the Knicks went on that 28 nothing run in the third quarter and they brought in their young guys, they stuck Serge in there in the fourth quarter and he hit three 15-foot jumpers in a row right around where he's like, pretty much automatic from there and that kind of got him into this mode of like look I don't have to sit in the corner I don't have to just take threes I can go back to making mid-range jump shots because a two is better than a missed three mm -hmm. and I think that sort of turned around his offense he's getting a little bit more engaged defensively look he needs to rebound and he's doing that and that's why they're playing so well Co-sign? You know yeah, co-sign that. And, of course, I sat on this couch last season, at the end of last season, saying, <laughs> Iblaka, Iblaka, Iblaka. He's back at doing that. The aggressiveness is back, and that's what these people have been waiting for. And he's starting to do that, and he's waking up and doing that more. These people. These people. These people. <laughs> the Dan, but, but uh, Dan's right. 15 and 7. This team is. Well, hey, yeah. yeah. Back to Dan's point. Essentially, it could be 18 the group, and The group no, is 15 three. and 7. Four straight wins. You look at the next three games, all sub-500 teams. Should we expect uh, some streaking? Or is it a fair expectation, Dan, for this group to close out against the Memphis team who's got like one win in the last Well, month? yeah, it, it's really the next seven games. And I, and I was talking to Sherman Hamilton before the game last night, and he, he laughed because I said, I think the Raptors are going to be on an 11-game win streak when they come home <laughs> to, to face the 76ers on the, on the 23rd. Okay, a little extreme, but... Cleveland's on a 12-game win streak. The Celtics won 16 or 19 in a row at some point. Why can't the Raptors reel off these wins? They're playing great. They're strong on the road. And not only that, but these teams coming up, not only are they poor teams relatively, they all have injury issues as yeah. well. Answer Dan's question. Why can't they go 11-0? I think they can, but okay. I think also it's just tough to win 11 games in a row, especially there's some back-to-back -back sprinkled in there, and Philly is tough. But if you do look at the schedule a little further, outside of the four-game winning streak they're on, there's actually 11 winnable games in the next 11. I'm not saying they're going to do that, but you should For go 9-2, sure. and 8-3 and three in that stretch. But why can't sure. we say that they should and are expected to do that? Because, because if you anybody be can beat anybody on this any is true. given Mans night. get hot NBA. any night of the week. Yeah. Mans get hot. It's true. Like, this is the NBA, right? But you should be expected as a team that wants to be considered a championship quality team yeah. to win this 
and like every game, Real like, but wins, like, right? like like Dallas is terrible, too. right? But the yeah. other night they won and scored 130 points or something like that. So it's not like you're just playing. They should be able to beat teams. Sacramento twice. They, they're going to get Phoenix again. with it. probably Booker's not going to play. The clip they're going to get the Clippers. Blake Griffin's not going to play. Yes, yeah, so you, you have ups and downs, but really. Right now, get Memphis why not? first. Yeah, okay? go to go one game at a time. Get one game first. at a time. They, they got time, Indiana. They got Charlotte. They yeah. got you know yeah. these teams first. They can they can do yeah. this. Yeah. One All game right. at a they time. Did a but I there was an 11 game win streak I think last year or two years ago. Should Ex happen. Expectations on the rise for the Toronto Raptors. Yeah, man. Um, absolutely. A team who has unreal expectations and a team who doesn't have unreal expectations. The Golden State Warriors in our big game hunting segment versus the Utah Jazz. After Gordon Hayward exited stage left and went to Boston, people pretty much wrote off the Jazz. How impressed are you with the fact that they are now battling for a top four seed in the Western Conference, the stronger of the two conferences? Devo, I'll start with you. I, I'm not that impressed, to be honest with you, because really, it's still you're early. not. I, we're a quarter through the season, right? They I were on a six-game winning streak. There's no superstar. Yeah, but did you see Gobert. who they played in the six? The best team record-wise they played in the six-game winning streak was the Denver Nuggets. I'm sorry, but that's the Denver Nuggets. Okay. The fine. toughest team maybe was Fair Milwaukee. Argument. All right. Milwaukee's tough. No, I like Milwaukee. Don't get me wrong. I love me the Greek freak, but. This is not like they weren't playing Golden State. They weren't playing the Raptors. They weren't playing the Cavs or the Celtics. They didn't play quality teams. You, know, you can only play who's in front of you, but I get your argument. Six game win streak but against, like, it should be. Would expected. you even have expected this Utah Jazz game to string to get the team to no, string? I didn't. No. no, especially when Gobert went Gobert down. Went Absolutely down not. Fair. But they take the personality of their coach. Like, this is a team that's been overachieving for the last, I, I would say, two or three years. So yes. I'm not that surprised, but when you do look at their personnel, it's like, what? Who's that? Yeah. That? Like, what? How hey, is that who's happening? Because yeah. that, yeah. yeah. that point, Donovan Mitchell, point He's nice. guard, He's nice. out of Louisville, had 41 the other, 46 the other night, I think it was 31 against the Warriors. Is he the ro best rookie in the league not named Benjamin Simmons? Oh, that's tough. Yeah, 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 I would say so. I mean... He's starting and, and getting all the shots that he wants, so he's given that opportunity. I don't, I don't think Lonzo's been that bad as well. Would you but take I Lonzo ahead of, the, of Spider Mitchell? No, I, I heard Mitchell. I thought Mitchell was going to be good. Why are you fighting this so much? No, I like Mitchell. I would take Mitchell. You still put Lonzo. But I, well, I see Lonzo a different pl as a different player. There, are, there aren't players like him in the NBA How's because of the way he's his, his fine. Hey, listen, it's a different game. He's got to learn it. But the way he sees the court, the passes that he's making, nobody's making those plays right now in the NBA. Okay, thanks, Lavar. Uh, Dan, <laughs> I'm just saying <laughs> it's different. He's, look, he's your impressions look, of Spider Mitchell. Utah's a big surprise, and so's Mitchell. I mean, he, he, when we went in uh, for the Raptors game in early November, the Raptors won in Utah, and I was doing some research, and I saw this guy, Donovan Mitchell, uh, had put together a couple of good games, and I really hadn't heard of him. You know, you didn't hear about him on draft night. He wasn't one of those big names Lonzo Ball was, but for their rookie seasons right now, Mitchell is outperforming Ball. He can shoot. He can score points. And as good as Ball is as a passer and a rebounder, and you know, maybe stirring the drink of his team. Mitchell right now is playing better, and yeah, he, he would have to be in second place right now if the if rookie of the year Sorry, voting Lamar. is happening. Yeah. I, Sorry, put a, I put you know what I put Lonzo behind another Laker, Kuzma. I think Kuzma is playing better than Lonzo hands down. If they started him more often, I think that changes things. But Kyle Kuzma is a legit player, and no one Ooh. expected that. Can I just say that Randy yeah, is you, right okay, about okay, something? We got to go. We got to go to break. We're almost at ten minutes in the opening yeah. segment. You really picked the wrong Laker to boost this argument. Good job, though. Um, <laughs> he was still right more to come coach, here at Canada's yeah. Home for talking hoops. We got to talk about this Oklahoma City Thunder team. Are they top four? Bottom eight? They got a tough win against Utah. Strung together a couple of big wins. We'll talk about that and more when we return on Randy's place for talking Lakers, <laughs> Lamar.